Hey, welcome back to another episode of Crazy D's Equipment. I have missed you guys. I hope you have missed me. Um, today, we're going to talk about the, not like a top 10, but 10 of the greatest tractors from the 1920s. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hello, all you tractor lovers. Dave and I had such a great time meeting Greg and his family and touring his farm and seeing his collection and hearing all the stories that went along with it. And we want to meet y'all too. So send us an email, uh, crazydsequipment at gmail.com. Tell us about your collection. We don't care if it's five tractors or a hundred tractors. We want to hear the backstory. We want to tour your place. We want to meet you. We want to hear about your memories on these uh, tractors with your family. Um, send us the email. Again, that's crazydsequipment at gmail.com. Of course, we need your name and a way to contact you. Let us know where you live. Um, we will only travel within the United States, preferably 12 hours or less. Mm -hmm. um, again, crazydsequipment at gmail.com. Send us your stories. We would love to meet you. Number 10. Massey Harris 1222. This tractor is manufactured by Massey Harris as a standard tread tractor. The factory is what, excuse me, was located in Weston, which is Ontario, Canada, between 1920 and 1922. Um, this tractor is actually based on a design licensed from Parrot. The horsepower is running anywhere from 12 to 22. This tractor has three plows. The the engine is a Buddha HTU. It is gasoline, four cylinder, liquid cooled, um, coming in at 312 cubic inches. Um, so Massey Harris was formed with a merger of the Massey and Harris companies. Uh, they were both major manufacturers of harvesting machinery um, in Canada. Massey Harris then merged with Ferguson after Harry, excuse me, after Harry Ferguson had split from Ford. Um, that's where we get Massey Ferguson. Um, and then in 1994, AGCO purchased Massey Harrison and continues to use the name. Number nine. We have the Wallace K1525. This tractor was manufactured in Racine, Wisconsin between 1919 and 1923 as a standard tread tractor. Uh, Wallace is who the manufacturer was, which is a part of J.I. Case plow works. Um, horsepower is drawing between 15 and 25. Um, this is a two to three, um, two to three plow tractor. Um, the engine is gasoline. It's four cylinder, liquid cooled. Um, we're looking at 326 cubic inches. Chassis is a four by two, two wheel drive with manual steering, um, and then transmission is two speed. Um, so just a fun fact, the Wallace Tractor Company um, built from 1902 to 1932, primarily in Racine by J.I. Case Plow Works. Uh, that's a different company than Case Thre Threshing Machine, um, which would have built the Case brand of tractors. Wallace Tractor was founded by Henry Wallace, who is the son-in-law of Jerome Case. Henry Wallace was also the president of Case Plow Works, um, which had been founded by J.I. Case. Early work on these tractors dates back to 1902, and some assembly was done in the Cleveland area, but the company's formal organization um, happened in Racine about 1912. Um, Case Plow Works was sold to Massey Harris, and Massey took over production of the Wallace tractor. Massey Harris continues to use the Wallace brand until 1932 when Massey Harris, uh, when the Massey Harris name replaced it. Number eight. Advance Rumley Oil Pull R 2545. This was manufactured by Advance Rumley as a standard tread tractor um, in LaPorte, Indiana. Um, 
These were built between 1924 and 1927 uh, with a total build of 761. Horsepower is ranging between 25 and 50. Um, the engine is kerosene, two cylinder, liquid cooled horizontal, um, coming in at 910 cubic inches. The chassis is a four by two two wheel drive and the cab is an open operator station. Uh, Rumley started in 1853 in Laporte, Indiana, ma manufacturing threshers and then moved on to steam engines. The first internal combustion tractor at the company was the oil pool launched in 1910 with an oil cooled engine. A 1911 merger with the Advanced Thresher Company changed the name to Advanced Rumley. And in the late 20s, um, they attempted to enter the market for smaller tractors with the Dual and the 6A, but faced difficulties. So Alice Chalmers purchased Advanced Rumley in 1931 and stopped production of all of those models. Number seven. J.I. Case 4072. This tractor is manufactured for two years between 1921 and 1923. That was 100 years ago. These are manufactured by J.I. Case as a standard tread tractor, also uh, built in Racine, Wisconsin. There were only 41 of these tractors made with an original asking price of four grand. Um, the horsepower is ranging from 40 to 91. This is an eight to 10 um, plow tractor. Um, and the cubic inches, the engine, this, this is a large engine, uh, cubic inches, 1230. Um, the engine is a J.I. Case kerosene four-cylinder liquid cooled. We have manual steering. We have two-wheel drive and an open operator station. So Case was a major manufacturer of farm and industrial equipment um, during the 20th century, like um, they did steam engines, and they began building the stream, the, excuse me, the steam tractors in about 1869. Um, Case then merged with International Harvester in 1983, and they formed Case IH. Number six. Alice Chalmers 2035. This was built between 1922 and 1930 uh, by Alice Chalmers as a standard tread tractor in West Alice, Wisconsin. So fun fact, when the Alice Chalmers E1830 was retested in 1921, um, it brought in 930 RPM. It produced a rated 38 belt horsepower. So the tractor at that point was renamed to the 2035. So it started out as the 1830, became renamed to the 2035. Um, horsepower is running between 20 and 35. The engine is gasoline, um, an Alice Chalmers engine, four cylinder, liquid cooled, vertical valve in head. The engine is 460 cubic inches. Chassis is four by two, two wheel drive. We have manual steering and an open operator station for the cab. Um, transmission is a two-speed unsynchronized gear. So the Alice Chalmers Company, um, they were a major manufacturer of farming and industrial equipment in the United States for most of the 20th century. They were headquartered in Milwaukee uh, with a major tractor factory located in West Dallas. Um, that town was actually named for the company. Uh, financial difficulties led to a dissolution in 1985. Uh, the farm equipment operations were sold to Klockner Humboldt Dutz of German Humboldt Dutz of Germany, and tractor production continued under the Dutz Alice name until 1989. Um, then the management purchased the company and formed Agco. Number five. Fordson F. This tractor was manufactured by Fordson, which is a part of Ford, between 1917 and 1928. Two factories, we've got one in Dearborn, Michigan, and one in Cork, Ireland. Um, the total built 755,278, with the vast majority of those being um, within the United States. Uh, the name Fordson was used for two reasons. Uh, the Ford tractor name was already being used by a company in Minneapolis and the Ford Motor Company shareholders had no interest in tractor production. 
So that's when Henry Ford started um, an independent company for building tractors named Henry Ford and Son. Um, we have two engines we're going to talk about. The first one was the Hercules. Um, it was a distal engine, four-cylinder, liquid-cooled. Um, the Hercules engine was used in the Ford since until 1920. Um, this, uh, in 1920, uh, a Ford-built engine replaced the Hercules engine, although it was almost exactly identical. Um, this is a Ford distillate four-cylinder engine, also uh, liquid-cooled. Um, the only real difference is just just a slight difference in cubic inches. Um, both their two-wheel drive had manual steering and an open operator station. Number four. Hart Parr 1630. This was built between 1924 and 1926 by Hart Parr. Um, this is a standard tread tractor. The factory was located in Charles City, Iowa with the whopping original asking price of $1,350. Horsepower is ranging between 16 and 30. Um, the engine is gasoline two-cylinder liquid cooled with a displacement of 464 cubic inches. Steering is manual. Chassis is two-wheel drive, four, excuse me, four by two, two-wheel drive. Um, this tractor has an open operator station for the cab and a two-speed gear transmission. So this company um, was founded in early 1900s in 1901 by Charles Hart and Charles Parr. They were both engineering students at the University of Wisconsin. Um, they are two of the early pioneers of gasoline tractor design. Um, also the first American manufacturer to put gasoline tractors into production in 1903, um, just two years after the company was founded. They can make a claim to being the first in the world. In 1929, Hart Parr merged with Oliver Chilled Plow to form the Oliver Company. Number three. The Advanced Rumley Oil Pull S 3060. This tractor is built for four years in La Port, Indiana um, by Advanced Rumley between 1924 and 1928. They produced 514 tractors. Um, the horsepower is running between 30 and 60. Uh, this is a Rumley engine, kerosene, a two cylinder liquid cooled. Um, the engine displacement, we're looking at 1,399 cubic inches. Chassis is four by two, two wheel drive. Transmission is three speed. And this tractor pulls in a whopping weight of 17,500 pounds. Honorable mention. Happy Farmer H 1224 was only built for a year between 1922 and 1923. Um, this was manufactured by Happy Farmer, which was a part of the of lacrosse tractor. Uh, the factory is loca was located in La Crosse, Wisconsin. Horsepower is uh, running between 12 and 24. Um, this is a three plow tractor. Uh, has a kerosene engine, uh, two cylinder, liquid cooled. Displacement is 395 cubic inches. The chassis is a four by two, two wheel drive with manual steering. And um, this is a one speed gear tractor with an open operator station. So Happy Farmer um, started producing tractors in Minneapolis in 1916. Uh, the company uh, was soon reorganized with as the Lacrosse Tractor Company. Uh, they merged Happy Farmer and the Starwright Engine Company and continued to build the Happy Farmer brands until 1921. Um, at that point, Oshkosh Tractor made plans to purchase and move production, but the deal fell through and Happy Farmer ceased production. Number two. John Deere, Unstyled D. I don't even know why Dave put this on the list because he doesn't even like John Deere. This tractor is built from 1923 to 1953 by John Deere as a standard tread tractor. In, uh, they're built in Waterloo, Iowa. Um, a lot. They, they built a lot, 160000 the original asking price back in 1924 was $1,000. Um, in 
The D did have the longest run of any model of John Deere tractor. Um, the styled and unstyled versions ran from March of 1923 until July of 1953, so about 30 years. Um, serial numbers 31321 through 31412 are not Model Ds, but are Waterloo Boy Ns, which were built after Model D production had begun. Um, the horsepower is ranging between 15 and 27. Um, we've got a couple of different engines. We have a John Deere all-fuel two-cylinder liquid-cooled. Um, this was used from uh, about the beginning of 19, uh, excuse me, used from the beginning until about 1927. Um, the engine, uh, excuse me, displacements 465 cubic inches. Then we have John Deere all-fueled also two-cylinder liquid-cooled, but this larger 501 cubic inch engine was introduced in 1927. So this is what replaced, uh, replaces the 465. Um, this engine is 501 cubic inches. We had two-wheel drive, manual steering, and an open operator station with a steel pan seat, which are very comfy, I may add. And number one. J.I. Case 1832, of course it's number one. This was manufactured between 1924 and 1927 by J.I. Case as a standard tread tractor. Um, this was built in Racine. Horsepower ranges from between 18 and 32. Uh, the engine is a J.I. Case kerosene four-cylinder liquid-cooled engine. Displacement is 381.7 cubic inches. Chassis is four by two, two wheel drive. We have manual steering. We have an open operator station for the cab. Uh, two speed uh, gear on the transmission and the weight is 6,500 pounds. Thank you so much for joining us today. I have really missed doing these videos. Uh, thank you for your patience in how long it's taken us for um, a new one of these videos to come out. Um, we hope you love the video. Keep sending us the emails and the submissions. We'd love to hear from you. We love your comments. We'd love to hear what you would love to see from us on the videos. Um, so from all of us here at Crazy D's Equipment, um, we hope you all stay safe. Until next time.